Welcome to the Words That Change Lives podcast, helping leaders, coaches, and small business owners to 10 times the impact of their message. Join us as we delve into the art of powerful language, enabling you to speak with unwavering honesty, communicate authentically, and create a lasting impression with every word. If you know me in any way, shape or form, you will know that storytelling has been a backbone topic of my career. And if you check out the first couple of episodes, you'll hear more on that. But storytelling was the thing that helped me to help introverted leaders to communicate to their people. I used to work within financial services organisations. I worked with accountants and actuaries and people who were very technically able, but when it came to the soft skills, they found it quite difficult to engage a room, to speak in front of people. They found it incredibly hard. And so I swooped in and helped them. And I picked up the tool of storytelling along the way and realised that actually because we are hardwired for stories, all of us, it's in our DNA. And as I say, I've explained that, and I think it's episode three, why stories are in in our DNA, that Anybody can use stories to engage an audience, no matter how hard you find speaking, presenting, being in meetings, um, doing keynote talks or TED talks or whatever it might be. Using stories is going to help you increase your confidence, effectiveness, articulation and engagement with the audience. And I've been building my business for 10 years this year. It's been various different iterations, but essentially I was thrust into the online world and I did not have a clue how to generate leads, to sign clients. I had to learn all of that the way that most people do have to do it when they start their own business. But I did have the tool of storytelling in my back pocket that I was able to pull out and use. And in this episode, this is for you if you are someone who needs to show up on social media, you want to engage an audience, you want to grow an audience, you want to convert those audience members to clients, you want them to buy from you, then this is for you. And even if you're a leader with an organization and you need to post stuff on social media, you need to write reports or articles, This is going to help. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you 11 structures that you can use in your social media content or wherever you're actually sharing the written word that you want to engage people. Not just the written word, in video format too. So this stuff that I'm sharing with you can be used in written and verbal formats. So everything that I'm showing today, these 11 story structures, I am going to be doing that. And of course, within my programs that I've got, my courses that you can find on my website, I break this down and I go into this in a lot more detail. But hopefully this is going to be like a nice punchy episode where I'm going to give you some real practical story structures that you can use today. The first thing that we need to understand about why we need to do this is because a lot of the times we get how we communicate online wrong, especially when we're out of practice or we're not entirely sure of how we should be coming across. I've fallen into this trap many times myself. And the best thing to remember is is kind of tell, don't sell. And if we're telling people all of the things about ourselves rather than always just selling something, then it's going to be more engaging with the audience because there's a lot of bias saturation online. There's a lot of coaches out there and consultants all broadcasting into the abyss. So the, the audience member, whoever's reading this or hearing this or watching you on a video needs to be turned on. And when we think about this, it's thinking like films and documentaries. It's how you're actually sharing information and thinking about the way that you are telling that you're sharing that information that's going to make it engaging. It's fiction versus non-fiction. It's thinking, you know, what what is important for me to be sharing here in terms of the stories I'm sharing or, you know, the, the, the narrative I'm giving or the opinion I'm giving and how can I make that really engaging? So I'm just going to dive straight in with these strategies and these structures and I'm going to share these with you and I would love to hear your thoughts on this please do let me know 
by contacting me hello at helenpackham.com and let me know if you've got any more because I've got loads but I'm just going to be sharing these with you so again this is for you if you're showing up in any type of way and you can also use this in your talks as well of course talks presentations briefings but specifically I am sharing this if you are someone who needs to tell stories online who needs to build engagement and a brand online this is what you can do the first is using what I call sequential storytelling. Now, I recommend this to a lot of my clients who are re-establishing themselves or re-emerging or launching a business where maybe they haven't been as visible on social media. A sequential story is essentially getting your core story, breaking it down into chunks and sharing it over a number of posts with a build up to say it's coming and then key calls to action in between each video. I recommend doing it on video and I recommend sharing it in three parts over the space of around a week. Now, in order to do this, you need to know what your core story is. And if you don't know your core story, please go back to episodes one and two of this podcast where I walk you through my own core story, my evolved core story, and I share with you how you can write your own. Having your core story is going to be a huge benefit for you sharing any type of content on social media because you know the story, it's all aligned and you've got golden nuggets to share with the audience. And so breaking it down into three chunks and sharing it over the space of around a week with calls to action and questions and getting people engaged is going to be really beneficial. So that's the first one. The second one is a defining moment story. Now this is the defining moment of personal or professional growth and we want to put people inside that story on another episode I talk about a world tour where you're putting someone in the story and you're helping them to imagine what you were feeling seeing doing experiencing in that moment we need to understand what that defining moment was and so explaining the surroundings and the environment is also really good So it's going to be a story of personal or professional growth and transformation. This can be a little bit vulnerable and sometimes we have difficulty sharing these types of things. But the way to make it less personal is by describing the challenges faced and the steps you took to overcome them, but also really focusing on the audience and the message to the audience. Otherwise, you're just sharing a story of something that happened to you. And that in itself can feel a bit me, 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 pick me sort of thing. We don't want to be like that. And so making sure that there's a clear message with any defining moment that you share. Um, I've shared many defining moments. One that springs to mind is when my marriage broke down and I was in my house, my husband had moved out and I was staring at the empty rooms and I had to really make a choice. I had to pull myself together and make a choice, which changed the trajectory of my mindset. And so therefore that it's the message of, you know, we all have a choice. That's the message for the audience rather than the story itself. The third is then and now. And this type of story essentially reflects back to the past and then talks about the contrast in the present moment. So, for example, you will have a starting point of your story uh, wherever you were or wherever a person was or a situation was at the beginning the challenge you faced, and then the learning and wisdom from it and where you are now. The main purpose of this story is the contrasting between where I was and where I am now. Sometimes people start with the now, which is here I am on a sunny beach with loads of clients and this, but it wasn't always this way. At one point, I was on benefits, living on cans of baked beans with no clear way forward. I faced this challenge. I learned this stuff. And I want to share that it's possible for you too, if you take the steps that are required for yourself to do it. So then and now can be now and then. (laughs) Here I am now, but it wasn't always this way. There I was. This is what I learned. And this could be possible for you too. Of course, with always when I talk about this sort of stuff, it has to be completely ethical. It has to be realistic that it could be possible for them too. And usually when you're talking about personal journey, mindset stuff, it is. Yeah. So that's number three. Number four is a fable 
and then our modern golden nugget. So fable and golden nugget. And a fable is going to be one of those age old tales. So Aesop's fables, myths and legends from history that you can recall and then put a modern day twist on. So there's many of the uh, Aesop's fables and I'm going to link in the show notes uh, a few websites where you can actually just get a load of these old myths, legends and fables and you can look at them and they all have a moral. They all have a moral to their story. Uh, There's one I shared recently of the fable of the carpenter who was retiring and got asked to build one final house for his boss. And so he did it, but he rushed the job. He didn't do a very good job. And then at the end, the boss provided him the keys and said, this is your house that you can live in. And because he hadn't taken care, he was now, you know, the result of his bad work. And, you know, that's not rushing something, doing things properly, having pride in your work, those sorts of things. So a fable with a modern golden nugget is always a really good story to tell. And you can link that with anything to do with the problems that you solve or the things that you help people with in your content. A classic story structure is problem, agitate, solve. I learned this one right at the beginning of my business journey. When I was writing my own content, well, I still do write my own content, but I was starting out and trying to figure ways to engage with people. And problem agitate solve was the perfect one for that. Essentially, you're highlighting a problem in your ideal client audience, something that they are experiencing. So for me, I'll give you an example. It is a lack of clarity on creating an idea worth spreading for a TEDx, which stops people, holds them back because they don't know what to speak about. Then we agitate the problem by talking about the impact that that has on them. Well, it it doesn't take them any further forward to achieving their TEDx goal. It's something that, that continually gets put to the bottom of the list, but it's something that they really, really yearn to achieve. And just this simple blocker of not knowing what to talk about when there are easy steps to solve it is causing them lack of visibility and lack of authority that they crave. So to solve that, I help them by sharing some golden nuggets on how to get clear on their idea worth spreading. I do that across, I've done this across many things like reels and blogs, written posts to help people to think about their idea based on their expertise at a societal level. So that's just one example of problem agitate solve. You can, you can apply that to absolutely anything. The next one is the classic how to. Now, a lot of people, when they are posting content on social media, they think that this is all people want to hear. Whereas we really need to mix it up and we really need to change the stories that we're using because not everybody wants a how to. I'm giving you a how to in this particular episode, but you're not going to want every single episode to be a how to. Although I have had feedback that you like the how to. So that's why I'm sharing some real practical stuff in this particular episode. However, The how-to is going to be an introduction to the topic with a story, the problem or challenge that you are approaching and a solution with high level steps. So this how-to will have not a massive in-depth training or specific how-to of every single detail that they need. It's going to be chunked up. Usually three steps in a social media post is good. Sometimes you can put more, but we need, to, we need to know the steps to take at a high level. This will increase intrigue, engagement, and maybe somebody might reach out and say, okay, I want to know more about this. Can you let me know? Can we book a call? Whatever it might be. You're showcasing your authority here, your experience and your expertise, which is important, but you're not completely solving the problem. We can't do that in our content, but we can provide high value and we can provide things that people can take action on, like I'm doing in this very, very episode. I want you to take these and use them. And hopefully that's high value. Another one is the case study story. This is where you remove yourself from the storytelling and you look at a client, or you share a client's journey. Usually if we're doing a client case study, it's going to be a classic hero's journey because before they started working with you, they were having some kind of problem and then they worked with you and they overcame challenges and they learned new things. And now the result of working with you, they have achieved this. Obviously, this works very well with any type of health or fitness or wellness coach 
because there's quite clear tangibles, but you can apply it to absolutely any type of service, whether that's public speaking, the client came to me, they had no clue how to create an idea worth spreading. They didn't know the process for TEDx. We worked through those things together. They landed the TEDx gig. They performed on the stage and now they're receiving many, many views on YouTube and they're increasing their visibility daily. So there's lots of opportunities for a case study story and people like to hear them. Of course, you have to get permission from the client. It depends how much you could disclose, but using a case study story is really, really beneficial. Another story structure that you can use is the throwback. Now on this day in history, and then you tell a story around it, is always a really nice piece of content. Or it could be an anniversary, or it could be something that is uh, a, a marked moment that happened in the past. And to help you with this, there's a website called onthisday.com, which has basically got absolutely any type of day, anniversary, moment in history for the days of the week and the dates in the calendar that you can actually use to refer to. Another thing that uh, a lot of people like to do is, oh, it's it's World uh, Strawberry Yogurt Day, or <laughs> we are actually currently in Mental Health Awareness Week, which is very important. But a lot of people like to plant stories or tell stories around specific days of the year. But this is a different way of doing that. It's called the throwback. And you liken the day that you're speaking about something to a day in history where there's going to be a story attached to it. Another one, we're getting to the end now, is the quoted story. This is where you get a quote that really resonates with you and you tell a story around it in terms of its meaning to you and then a question to the audience. Now I have these coming out of my ears. You can also do this with memes. You can make it more lighthearted and you can use a meme to ask a question or spark engagement or tell a story. I actually have just done on the, at the time of recording, I've just done that about those bath pearls that everybody used to have. I put the meme up and uh, I've asked a question and uh, told a story around how I used to love them and how they used to gather dust in my bathroom. And so it doesn't have to be a quote, it could be a meme, but using the quote or the meme with a message that you have, sometimes that message can be more serious than others, can really help to tell a story about what you're thinking about. Another one is the analogy. And I call this the it's like. So when you're using analogies or metaphors, you are taking what you're saying out of context and making it more easy to understand, uh, especially if you are someone who has complex information to deliver. Using analogies as a story is always going to be really beneficial. I share uh, a lot where I talk about mindfulness with the analogy of the anchor and the boat, where the anchor is you as a person and the boat is your feelings and your emotions and the boat can bob around on the water it could be violently thrown about depending on the weather patterns but you will always remain true and still on the bottom of the ocean and I use that in a number of talks to explain how I helped to understand that in my mind rather than saying I learned about mindfulness and I learned how to you could be still and let your thoughts pass but uh, that you can still remain true to yourself. You see, this is just a different way of telling that, but it makes it more interesting. So using analogies and metaphors could be hugely beneficial, and it is a version of storytelling. Last two. The first is of the last two is I saw this and, and this is everyday documenting. Now you may have heard about documenting and creating, so creating content is doing it ahead of time, planning it, writing it on specific things, whereas documenting is in the moment, this happened, I saw this, I watched a film, I heard a song, there's something in the news, and this is what I think about it. This is really great, a great habit to get into and it increases visibility. I well, I have a love-hate relationship with social media uh, anyway, and this is something I always have to consciously do. But there was a time when I was documenting all the time, especially when I had my mum's group and I was literally going live every single day. I was documenting everything that was happening. It's a really good way of telling stories and getting used to telling stories in the moment. 
And then the final one is, is this happened? So this is more, I experienced this and this is what I have to say about it. So it's very similar to I saw this, but it's more of an event. So this happened to me. I encountered this and this is what I have to say about it. So I am going to put in the show notes a load of links. I'm going to put uh, a link to quote websites. I'm going to link to Aesop's fables and the parables. And then I've got a load of others on onthisday.com, which is what I talked about, research and fun, interesting facts. Because these sorts of things can really help you to uh, spark inspiration about your content and how you can tell stories with your content and really make it a fun experience because ultimately that's what we want to do. We want to make anything we do in business or life or work fun and this is a really great way of doing that. So I hope you found this useful. I am going to be doing more episodes like this. Please let me know what you think of this. If you haven't already, give me a follow wherever you listen to your podcasts and contact me hello at helenpackham.com so I can hear your thoughts on this topic and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to Words That Change Lives. Please rate, review and follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It really means the world and helps me to reach more people so that we can all harness the power of our words and change lives for the better. 